Hi there. So we have another uh, indeterminate torsion problem. Uh, in this case, uh, we've added a, a touch of complexity. Uh, the bar that's uh, being constrained at A and C is steel on the first portion between A and B, and then it's bronze between B and C. And that's going to add just a, a very minor wrinkle into how we solve this problem. Uh, so a couple things. So I've gone ahead, I've calculated the polar moment of inertia. It's a prismatic rod, if you will, in that it's the same cross-section all the way through it. Uh, so that's calculated up there uh, on the sheet. We know the material properties, and what we don't know is the torque T, and basically what we're get, given are limits for the maximum shear stress resulting from that torque, uh, a value of 125 megapascals if it occurs in the steel, because it's a stronger material, or simply 40 megapascals if it occurs in the bronze. And so we're going to have to calculate both, figure out uh, what the value of T would be, uh, and of course pick the lower one uh, that's going to uh, limit the, the stress uh, sufficiently. And then we'll go on, we'll calculate the angle of rotation at B. So what I've done a little bit differently than some of the other problems is I've gone ahead and I've laid out the entire uh, series of diagrams and graphs that I'm going to have to generate to solve this problem. I have my free body diagram, I have my primary, I have my redundant, and I have my torque force diagram, which will follow that, and then my angle of twist. And in my mind, laying all of these things out the way I have, it really means that I'm starting to see my path through the problem and I know the steps that I'm doing. So implicated or implied in this is that it is a statically indeterminate problem, that I'm going to use the method of superposition uh, to solve that by uh, breaking it into a primary and a redundant system, come up with a compatibility equation, uh, apply my static equilibrium. From there, I'm going to be able to resolve my reactions, go for my torque force diagram, uh, and on from there. And so I, I, I see a path through the problem, and I've laid out my sheet to uh, allow me to achieve that. So let's go ahead and start filling these things out. Uh, we'll start with our free body diagram and go on to our primary and redundant system. So on our free body diagram, of course, we have reactions. We have a torque at A and a torque at C. And we have our torque at B being applied, just T, and that looks good. So I have to make some choices to build my primary system. I have to remove one of my uh, reactions as a redundant reaction, and so I'm going to remove my reaction at C. So that means I still have a reaction at A, so that would be T at A, and in this case I'll give it a prime. The torque T still applied. And that looks pretty good. So everything else that's left has to move down to my redundant system, so we're still going to have a reaction at A, so I can put that in here. And that will be T at A, in this case, double prime. And we have to apply our reaction at C, but we apply it as if it was an externally applied force of the same value, so torque at C. And that's looking pretty good. The redundant system adds to the primary system to give us the original system. So to this, I'm going to add a commentary about my displacements, and I'm going to focus on my displacements at C because that's where I remove my redundancy. Uh, so we know that the angle of twist at C in the primary system, labeled phi C prime, and there will be an angle of twist at C in the redundant system, labeled phi C double prime, and in the original system, we'll have an angle of twist at C, and it will have to be equal to zero because, of course, it is a fixed support and it won't support any angle of twist. So that's all the kind of the logic that we need to go right on to our compatibility equation. So I'll just...
we'll look at our compatibility. And of course, compatibility is all about displacements. And so we pull the logic uh, directly off our diagrams. And we know that phi uh, at C prime plus phi at C double prime is equal to phi at C, which is equal to zero. And we have our compatibility equation. So I'm going to go right ahead and I'm going to build those using our equation for angle of twist. And so just uh, in case you need to recall or you're looking up in your equation sheet, angle of twist is equal to the torque multiplied by the length over which it's applied divided by the polar moment of inertia and the shear modulus. Uh, let's do a couple methods of section. So in our primary system, we're going to have a torque that's happening between uh, A and B, and that's going to be equal to a negative T. If we do a method of section, throwing away everything to the left and just looking, all we have is the applied torque. So let's build that up here. So we have negative T. And it occurs over the length of AB, or 1,500 millimeters, and divided by, I'm just going to leave J in there as a variable because it'll cancel out in this instance and, and save myself some time. And G, so this is steel, so our shear modulus is 80,000 MPA. And just to be clear, I'm just going to, identify what this is, is this is phi at C prime. And to this, according to our compatibility equation, we need to add to that phi at C double prime. So I'm going to do a couple methods of sections. Uh, what is the torque in, in these sections? They're going to be equal, and they're going to be equal to our reaction at C. Again, doing the method of sections, covering over the left-hand side with my hand, and they're going to be equal to T sub C. I can even write that down if you like, T sub C, T sub C, that was negative T up there. So let's uh, put them in here. So we have plus T sub C, and the first section over which it responds, and the reason why I'm breaking these out is because we have those two material properties, and so one of those variables in the denominator is going to change, namely the shear modulus. So we have to separate AB from BC. So we have T sub C acting over the 1500 millimeters divided by the polar moment of inertia and the shear modulus for steel. And to that, we have to add T sub C acting over the 2,500 millimeters between B and C divided by J and all multiplied by the shear modulus for the bronze, which is 45,000 megapascals. And as I did before, just to be clear, I'm going to identify that all of this is phi C double prime. And so by adding all of those together, we can set them equal to zero. And when we do that, we see that we have a relationship T sub C with regards to T, so we can isolate on T sub C. And we can determine that 0 0.252 times the torque applied. And so we have one of our reactions. All we have to do is look to equilibrium to get our other one. So our one equation of equilibrium is the sum of the torques about the x-axis is equal to zero. Going left to right, of course, we have T sub A minus T plus T sub C. We substitute in 0.252t for T sub C, and that tells us that T sub A is equal to 0.748 times T. And so I'm just going to underline those. Those are our two reactions. 
Okay, so we've calculated our two reactions, and I'm going to go back over to the left-hand side, and I'm going to build up my torque force diagram, uh, because that's what we're going to be able to use uh, when it comes to looking at the internal stresses. And so we know uh, T sub A is equal to 0 0.748 times T, and it's shown as positive, which we know is going to cause a negative internal torque. So we're going to get... an in negative internal torque, and the value of that is going to be 0 0.748 times T. And then the torque, the externally applied torque T, is going to push that up, add T to that, and it'll push us up to a value of 0 0.252 times T. And we'll finish off our diagram. And we have our torque force diagram. Still, we don't have the value of T to substitute in, but we're, we're getting pretty close. And so now we're ready to look at those stress limits, which are applied in part A, and calculate what torque uh, we could sustain without exceeding those stress limits. So let me just write down here. So, so determine our torque T for limits of tau max. Our tau max, we're going to do it first in the steel, then we'll repeat the calculation in the bronze. Both will provide a different torque T. And if we're going to meet both limits, then we're going to have to choose a torque, which is uh, the lower of the two. So tau max, and that's equal to our, so th this is for steel, so that would be our torque in the steel uh, multiplied by the radius C divided by our polar moment of inertia. And so if we go to our torque force diagram, we see that our torque in the steel is equal to 0 0.748 times T multiplied by our radius, which we know is 40 millimeters. And we already calculated our polar moment of inertia, so I'm just going to copy it down here, 4.02 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. And that uh, is equal to, or must be equal to, the value given 125 megapascals. So when we isolate on T then, uh, we can solve for T and determine that torque is equal to 16.8 times 10 to the 6 Newton millimeters or 16.8 kilonewton meters. And that's if we're going to uh, limit the stress in the steel. So, so as long as we don't exceed 16.8 kilonewton meters on the torque, then we know that our steel limit is going to be uh, met. So let's quickly repeat that calculation, only this case, we're going to look at T max in the bronze, and that's equal to T in the bronze, again, multiplied by C, all divided by J. So again, go to the torque force diagram, you see that the internal torque over the length of the bronze section is equal to 0 0.252 times T. 40 millimeters is the radius, and our J has not changed, 4.02 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th, and we set that equal to a value of 40 megapascals given in the problem, and then we isolate for our torque, and we calculate a value of 15.96 Uh, times 10 to the 6 Newton millimeters or 15.96 kilonewton meters. Now, between the two of them, obviously a torque of 15.96 will satisfy both the bronze and the steel limits, whereas the higher torque calculated for the steel would not 
uh, meet the requirements of the bronze. So we're going to have to choose the lower one as the uh, governing torque and uh, select it. So the last uh, part of the question was to calculate the angle of twist. at B, and then we'll plot it over the length of the member. And so this is uh, fairly straightforward. We know that the angle of twist at B is equal to the relative change in the angle of twist between A and B. You could do B and C as well, because we know both A and C start at zero. And so that goes into our equation. So we have the torque between a and B, the length of A and B all over J. A, B is the same as everywhere else, and G, A, B. Uh, so we start to substitute in. So the torque in A, B, again, is 0.748T. So 0.748, and in this case, we'll substitute in for T in our 15.96 uh, kilonewton meters or times 10 to the 6 newton millimeters and the length over which it applies is 1500 millimeters all divided by J that's uh, 4.02 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth and our shear modulus for steel of 80,000 megapascals. And that tells us, okay, there's one thing in here. So this is a negative value, of course, for the torque. So I missed that, put that in, negative 0 0.00, oh, 0.055681 radians. And of course, if you want to, you got 360 degrees per two pi radians, and you can multiply that out and figure out that it's equal to negative 3.19 degrees if you're more comfortable in degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish our plot. Uh, so we're moving negative. We go linear to our value that we got, which is negative 0.055681. And returns linear back up to zero at the other support. And that's about all there is. Uh, so, a fairly quick application of uh, all of what we've learned with superposition uh, to resolve for the reactions of a statically indeterminate system uh, using a permissible stress. Uh, to determine a couple different values for torque, choosing the uh, uh, one that governs to be conservative, and then going on to look at the angle of twist. So just a problem that builds itself nicely through uh, the system and comes out with a nice clean answer. So hopefully that was uh, helpful to you. And I think that wraps up uh, our videos on torsion for now. We'll have some more later on in the review, and uh, we'll eventually put up some links to those as they get uh, put together. So uh, thanks.